Thinking of the Phantom of the Opera may bring to mind powerful duets and dynamic music. But decades before it became the longest running show on Broadway, it was a novel written by French writer Gaston Leroux. The story of a disfigured musician living under the opera house was his fanciful explanation of real architectural elements and rumors connected with the Palais Garnier in the 1880s. The Phantom has been considered one of the first classic movie monsters, but has since become known as a tragic romantic character. There are many variations of this story, but today we're going to look at four major English language film adaptations. This is The Phantom of the Opera by the book. The Phantom of the Opera first achieved international fame after the release of the 1925 silent film version. The success was in part due to Lon Chaney, who created his own makeup for the iconic role. Nicknamed the Man of a Thousand Faces, his transformation is actually one of the more accurate looks in line with the novel. The result was so shocking at the time that some even fainted at the unmasking scene in theaters. The film went through several iterations before the final release, including a romantic comedy version that was booed off screen. The final version of the film ultimately received positive reviews from both critics and the public. It kept more of the original story, but also included a new dramatic ending wherein the Phantom is caught by the mob and killed. This version is the first to portray a brunette Christine, who is originally described as having blonde hair and blue eyes. It also changes the major character of the Persian, a mysterious man from Eric's past, to that of a French detective. Although the film is limited in showing character development, it does stay true to a number of major plot points and dialogue from the novel. The nature of silent film, however, meant that it had to rely on strong visual imagery. Technicolor scenes highlighted the masquerade costumes, and most notably the Phantom as the Red Death. Without a doubt, the cinematography and theatrical expressions help transport viewers of the time beneath the Paris Opera and into the world of gothic horror. The 1943 film version, Phantom of the Opera, is a remake of the first movie, and thus veers even further away from the original novel. In this movie, the Phantom's character is rewritten as a tragic hero, an aging violinist who has been dealt a bad hand in life, literally. It's no use, maestro. Something has happened to the fingers of my left hand. His hand injury results in his dismissal from the orchestra, but his main concern is whether he can continue paying for Christine's voice lessons. In previous drafts of the film, Eric was intended to be revealed as Christine's father, but this did not make the final cut, thereby eliminating the personal connection between Christine and the Phantom. And unlike the original story in which the Phantom is born with a deformity, the disfigurement happens during the course of the movie due to a series of misunderstandings. He sabotages the prima donna's performance and kidnaps Christine towards the end of the film. This version also escalates the romance with an added love interest. In addition to Raoul, who is now a police inspector, Christine meets Anatole, a baritone at the opera. The two vie for her attention and eventually team up to rescue her. In the end, however, Christine decides to focus on her career instead. But you must choose between an operatic career and what is usually called a normal life. This modern ending was reflective of the era, as millions of women entered the workforce and redefined gender roles in the years of World War II. To be sure, the 1943 adaptation minimizes the horror element in favor of the romantic comedy. Yes, there are a few moments of suspense, but with its many singing sequences, the film harked back to the lighthearted musicals that were popular before the start of the war, masking darker themes with a distinctive 40s flair. The 1962 film adaptation of The Phantom of the Opera shifts the setting of the novel to London, England, one of many major departures from the novel. 
The studio, Hammer Films, was best known for its horror movies, and in the 1950s, started adapting more literary characters for feature-length films, including The Phantom. Loosely based on Eric, and now renamed Professor Petrie, The Phantom is revealed to be an impoverished composer who was accidentally disfigured by acid. By using a backstory similar to the 1943 version, the film downplays The Phantom's morbid nature. Instead, it utilizes a one-dimensional antagonist in the form of Lord Ambrose, a wealthy, corrupt composer who steals the professor's music and later tries to prey on Christine. The screenwriters also introduce a new character who does the Phantom's dirty work and plays a major role in his life. In fact, it could be argued that the relationship between the Phantom and the Dwarf is more substantial than that of the Phantom and Christine, the latter of which is completely unaware of his existence until after she is chosen to replace the lead singer in the opera. After Christine tells the opera's producer, Harry Hunter, about the voice that she hears in her room, the rest of the film mainly focuses on Harry solving the mystery of what happened to the Phantom. When Harry later discovers the Phantom's underground lair, there are no scenes of torture as described in the novel. And I will hear my work performed. In the last few minutes of the movie, the Phantom confronts Lord Ambrose and ultimately sacrifices himself to save Christine. In combining elements from the previous two films, this adaptation tries to be a romance, horror, and tragedy rolled into one. But with so many uncharacteristic modifications, this version has little in common with the original story. The 2004 film adaptation is itself based on Andrew Lloyd Webber's musical adaptation of The Phantom of the Opera. While there were certainly artistic liberties taken with this musical version, both the show and the movie retain major points of the original story with some influences from previous adaptations. In the novel, LaRue presents the narrative as a journalistic quest to find evidence of the opera ghost. The musical utilizes a similar framework by starting out with the characters in the early 1900s and then transporting the viewer several decades into the past. The stage version differs most from the novel and its portrayal of the Phantom. Not only does it heighten the mystery surrounding his character, but the Phantom's tricks are never fully explained as they are in the original novel. The film version further changes his appearance to be more appealing than the corpse-like figure that is described in the book. The deformity now affects just half of his face, which he covers with the iconic mask that is now most associated with his character. This, combined with his more alluring nature and tragic backstory, has resulted in more rooting for the Phantom over Raoul, the conventional hero figure. The musical and the film also eliminate a few other characters from the story, including Raoul's older brother, the Persian, and Madame Valerius. Some events and scenes from the stage musical were left out of the movie adaptation due to time constraints, but one major event in the story that is altered between mediums is the chandelier crash. Just as LaRue used music throughout the novel as a device for foreshadowing, Lloyd Webber created music that adds further depth to the story. The musical heightens the sentimentality for a melodrama that hones in on the emotional lives of the central characters. Specific melodies were created to establish each character's voice, evoke feelings, and convey inner emotions. Gaston LaRue, a theater lover himself, would surely be delighted to see the worldwide impact of The Phantom on entertainment and theater culture. These various film and stage renditions alter aspects of the three main characters to make the love triangle more appealing whether that is emphasizing Christine's innocence, Raoul's heroism, or Eric's pitiable past. In the novel, Raoul is well-intentioned and passionate, but at times insecure, insensitive, and childlike. Eric is violent, possessive, and horrifying. In the end, it is Christine's compassion and courage that saves the day. Ultimately, The Phantom of the Opera is about the power of love and the triumph of good over evil. We hope you liked watching this video. There were a few adaptations that we left out, including the 1990 TV miniseries, which presented another take on The Phantom and Christine's romance. Let us know which adaptation is your favorite, and if you've seen The Phantom of the Opera on Broadway or the West End. Thanks for watching!